Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. Woo! And uh, the Dean Winners Hall of Fame is in association with kitbag.com once again, people. Now, who have we got this week, boys? I'll tell you who we've got. It's one of the greatest European players of all time. It's Michel Platini. Oh. Mr. Europe himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some might say a controversial entry. Yeah, well, sure we'll come to well that. of course, current president of UEFA. We will mention that uh, later on. But but what a player. What mm. a player. It cannot be ignored. It, it, it really can't. Whatever he, he may be getting up to It would right be now. rubbish to do him as a profile, then ignore it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're as not... I said before we started recording, there's enough wife-beating drunks in the Dean Windows Hall of Fame. You can't <laughs> judge them on things they've done after football. Well, yeah. we are primarily going to be focusing on his admin, I would think. <laughs> His well, tax returns. Wow. Whatever, Fault, whatever he faultless. Whatever he's getting up to, which right is unusual now, for them, yeah. or whatever he goes on to do, he was quite simply a magnificent football player, absolutely magnificent. And his playing career can only be uh, applauded. But we will start where we always do with his birthday, the twenty first of June, nineteen fifty five. Oh, um, twelve years before <laughs> the summer. Oh, are you shutting <laughs> yeah. down for yeah. the yeah. summer? <laughs> Oh, someone's knocked off early. I've had too many, uh, <laughs> had too many cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I go to sleep now. <laughs> Just throwing your maths all out. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this man is the person who Zinedine Zidane would pretend to be when playing in the school playground. <laughs> That's how good he is. Yeah. <laughs> or was. A great hair model as well. Oh, yeah. For a balding yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. When you become like a sort of, um, when you sign with like a professional club, even as a like, youngster, yes. do you think you stop pretending that you are an actor, like a, you know, a current footballer? No, I wouldn't have thought so. But even yeah. if you're on the books of a club and, you know, George Best always said that he used to do sort of monologues of famous players in his head when he was playing and stuff. Oh, Wayne Rooney yeah, said recently sing, sing songs and stuff. Weird. Said recently that he would find out from the kit man what kit they were wearing on the next match, and he'd sort of visualise himself wearing that he's, kit, doing amazing he's, stuff. He's big into visualisation of Rooney. Yeah, he's, mm. he said it's been a huge part of his career. As, a, as am I. <laughs> yeah, is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's right indeed. I can see you all naked now. Uh, he had trials at Mets at an early age and uh, after a vigorous training session one day in hot conditions his uh, medical tests showed that his heart was struggling a little bit and Mets were, were quite um, concerned by this as you could imagine yeah. uh, now the medical tests weren't um, as uh, up to date as they are now um, but so he went to uh, Nancy after um, Mets said no thank you to him and he had some more uh, tests there, medical stuff um, and was advised to give up the sport but incredibly um, after perhaps more tests and, and one thing or another a bit of training uh, they said he was okay and he, he carried on with his footballing ambitions um, and, and we're grateful he did what a player he turned out to be he made his debut uh, at Fancy uh, at the age of 18 uh, they were relegated in his first season but the second season is where he started to come into his own. At an attacking midfielder he was, we mustn't forget. Scored 17 goals and they won the French second division. First season back in the top flight, finished seventh with Platini getting 22 goals. From the number 10 position, mm. from the Diaz. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and he just started having, started having a lot of fun in the 70s during the game. I mean, he won the French Football of the Year in 1976. Uh, same year he got his French, uh, first goal for the French national team with a trademark free kick mm. he was an absolute mm. git for a free yeah. kick <laughs> strangely really early in his career he was a target for sort of the boo boys quite a lot wasn't he and he really had to overcome that he had to work really hard to get people to stop just giving him stick well I think he, he very quickly established himself as an excellent player mm. but also that number 10 talismanic the, um, the flamboyant he was exactly. a fan of the old socks rolled down as well yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could, probably would rub people <clears throat> the wrong way a little bit yeah, absolutely, and and uh, he, he was that kind of right. Give the ball to me; I'll do something mm -hmm. amazing, you know. So when I always say that, but you boys never listen. Well, that's true. Yeah, you're never there. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we do a counter attack, uh, so yeah, I think that's probably the reasons, isn't it? There was so much expectation on him because he was so blooming good. That's why. I mean, it's a bit like when if Cristiano Ronaldo has a slightly off day or somebody like that in a, in a big game. Oh, he's bottled it again. Mm, you yeah, know. Yeah. The fact of the matter, he scored 600 goals. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, um, uh, after in the 70s, um, 1978 more specifically, he scored the only goal in the cup final when they won 1-0. And uh, he was only too shy of 100 league goals for, for Nancy when he, when he left them in in, in 1979 which was uh, absolutely incredible for, for an attacking midfielder, for an attacking yeah. midfielder. Uh, in 1977 he finished third in the Ballon d'Or but uh, better things would come to, uh, for him over there uh, played for France at the 1978 World Cup but failed to make an impression on the tournament well the team did really went out in the first round and that was when people got on his back a little bit there mm. Jim uh, he was playing through injury though 
uh, and didn't have the kind of showing that, that many thought he might have. With all those people on his back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very hard no, to move nothing. around, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, his, um, his sort of main um, skills were his manoeuvrability. He could sort of get through anything. And, yeah. But once you carry an injury like that, you, you, that's right. you're just ten times more sluggish, aren't mm. you, I suppose? A lot of players won't play if they've got a little mm. nick, nigger, will they? Some, mm. people, some players play through it, but English players especially. But yeah. uh, Back in France, he moved to uh, Saint-Étienne and uh, scored over 25 goals in each of his three seasons there, won the league in 1981. That's when Saint-Étienne were bang, banging yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tw- over 25 goals a season for a, for a midfield player. It's good. Absolutely super. It's Lampard-esque. It is Lampard-esque. Uh, the 1982 World Cup, he really started to show the world uh, what he could do with that number 10 on his back. And they came fourth, didn't they, uh, France? They did the reach the semi-finals and, and play some lovely football That's my favourite um, French kit. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice kit. one, isn't Beautiful it? Beautiful piece of that. They had a marvellous midfield quartet of uh, oh, Tigana playing. The magic defensive. Square. Yeah, well, that was the kind of the, the first Magic Square, although the, we'll come on to them in, in 1984 because there's, there's. Oh, it was 84, wasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah they, they, they kind of say the origins of it was in 1982. Um, uh, Jean Tigana playing defensive midfield with Gires and um, Giannini on the flanks and then Platini up uh, at the tip of the, of the midfield. Uh, and in the semis, they had an unforgettable match against the Germans. When uh, that was the one when Battisson got smashed by uh, <laughs> by Schumacher, it broke, two, lost three teeth, broke a vertebrae, was unconscious on the pitch, wasn't he? It was Referee it. gave a goal kick. Men were men back then. Yeah, yeah that's men true. were terrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Referees were idiots. Yeah, France were three one up in extra time. Yeah, and they, they didn't put it away and. Uh, and the Germans won on penalties but Platini said being involved in that match was still one of the greatest moments of his career as it provided such drama and entertainment and the French should have gone through that's a really quite refreshing didn't. attitude on yeah. something like that you know clearly again the man for the big occasion that he cannot let something like that affect him and especially yeah. as they, you know Schumacher should have been sent off oh yeah twice at least yeah. <laughs> basically Sch- Schumacher's hip hit Patrick Battiston in the mouth mm. and shattered his jaw yeah. And, and yeah it's, it's the worst foul ever yeah. So it's because of the you know the drama in the situation and the sort of context of it. All. And also like Schumacher, I mean, and later on Schumacher did apologise, but like initially he was quite blasé about it. He said, I think he was asked a question about it um, by by a journalist, and he said something like, "Oh, um, I'll just tell him I'll pay for the dental work. Tell him I'll pay for it if it's if he needs his teeth done. I'll True. pay for it." Sort of thing. Which is really mm. obviously horrendously arrogant. Anyway, back to Platini. The Platini's yeah, yeah. mouth was fine. Yes, that's and right. We're talking about him. He, I know his dentist. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He's a lovely man. He he's a lovely man. <laughs> uh, Platini joined Juventus in 1982 and had a wonderful time there. In his first season, he won the Coppa Italia and uh, the, the Serie A top goal scorer with only 16 goals. Mm. But still, he won it. That was, the old, that was back in the day when it was uh, mm. let's shut up shop. <laughs> <laughs> in 1984, France did uh, win a major tournament, the European Championships, uh, which was staged in France. Platini owned that tournament. I think it's uh, you know you talk about say Maradona in, in World Cup '86, uh, you know, kind of owned that tournament. But uh, you know, this is the absolute epitome. It was like no that. one else was even there. Mm. It really was, and and people I don't think really know too much about the European Championships uh, pre 1988 in this country. Mm-hmm. Uh, England weren't there in '84, but you know the European Championships was going for a while, and '84 was a decent tournament actually. Um, uh, oh my goodness! I mean, nine goals in five games. He scored two hat tricks in the two stages. perfect hat tricks. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> scored in every game, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, they beat they beat Portugal in an incredible game in the semis, three two. Platini scored the winner in the 119th minute, nice. uh, and they beat Spain in the final two nil. Um, and he scored yeah, every game in total nine goals. The next best scorer in the tournament was Denmark um, ex Chelsea man uh, Frank Arneson. What well, Chelsea man he behind the scenes? Uh, with three, with goals, three goals, with yeah. three goals, with three goals. During that tournament, France had, of course, the, the quintessential magic square, uh, with Fernandez coming in for that one, making up the four. With Jurès, Platini, and Tigana. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, some of the some of the games that French side of the sort of early and mid eighties were involved with were absolutely superb. And Platini was a great part of that. They played wonderful football, and probably should have. Dare I say maybe even won in 82? I mean, they, again, they got to the semi-finals in 86, mm. came third. They'd platonied. Whatever that means. Yeah, sort of Plateaued. Well. Uh, Plateaued. Sure. But what about his career at Juventus as well? well? He played in a couple of European finals, didn't he, and stuff? He did, yeah. Well, uh, uh, of course, uh, he won Well, he won the Cup in his Cup in 84. Hmm. Uh, and the league as well. He was top scorer in Serie A again, would be three seasons in a row. So, 84, he won the European Championship, mm-hmm. the Cup, mm. the league, and was top scorer. Yeah, and the Ballon d'Or. 
<laughs> Still bad, is it? <laughs> he won the Ballon d'Or three times in a row, 83 to 45. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Serie A top scorer three seasons in the first time uh, since the Swede Gunnar Nordell oh the big uh, man did it for Milan Mia, years yeah. previously uh, but I mean what a player he was it could pick a thread of past oh, the great, needle great two, two good feet could could slot, slip a slip a ball through would score his own goal like you said uh, free kick specialist yeah mm. yeah command to play well he's, yeah, he's obviously quality but he finished trof- trophy cabinet as well yeah. <laughs> but he finished like a striker didn't he when, yeah. he, when mm. we would go through absolutely beautiful um, yeah he was uh, he won the European Cup in 85 amidst the tragedy of the Heysel Stadium disaster he scored course. the winner didn't he uh, yeah he scored he, the penalty yeah that's it? right yeah. I tell you who else played in that game Cesare Prandelli current Italian manager oh right did he yeah you've had some players then uh, oh, yeah. Paolo Rossi yeah. um, would Zoff been a goal Boniek uh, Shiria played Oh, did he? Yeah, Tardelli. Was, was off in goal? Or was he finished then? But yeah, certainly they had some absolutely fantastic players. Yeah. Um, as I said, in 1986, they finished in the semi final. I think Zoff had finished because he lifted the World Cup in 82. Yeah, and that's that true, was him yeah, done, yeah. I think. Yeah. 1986, um, they knocked out Italy and Brazil on the way to the semis and were beaten once again um, by the Germans. Platini again playing with an injury during that tournament as well. Um, uh, something people don't know about Platini is that um, he was a big practical joker. He was asked in an interview with 442. Um, it, 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 someone said oh you used to be a bit of a practical joker and he said what What do you mean I still am the three most important things in my life my family, friends and having a laugh <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, wasn't he Jim he, he had a bit of a, a, a prankish sense of humour yeah and there's a really bizarre bizarre thing he used to do when they were on away trips <laughs> yeah. he'd like, go out in public set off firecrackers and then pretend to be dead <laughs> from a man with a history of a heart condition <laughs> that's gotta be a, that's gotta be illegal a, a the head of UEFA yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he still does that yeah I do just in, well. around the halls of UEFA yeah, yeah. yeah. with SEP yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you again yeah. <laughs> Um, in 1987 at the age of 32 he retired from football he felt he'd lost a yard of pace and rather than changing his game or becoming a bit part player, he would retire whilst at the top. Yeah, did you see his... Um, in 1988, he had a testimonial back at Nancy. Yeah. Um, it was a French team. Mm. Uh, we've got all these powers to play, obviously, against the World Eleven, And the World Eleven lineup included Lothar Mateus, <laughs> Marco Tardelli, <laughs> El Diego, Ooh. Francesco Lee, <sighs> Wee Gordon Strachan, ah. yeah, Zico, <laughs> and Paolo Futra. <laughs> really? Paolo Futre played. He was oh, at Atletico wow. Madrid at the time, and he played. Futre ten. Futre was a good player. Yeah. West Ham legend. Yeah, yeah, basically finished two all, and um, yeah, it was good. It was, I watched. There's a, there's a good little uh, clip of it on YouTube actually. It often shows how well a player's, re- how much a player's respected, isn't it? When yeah. when people like that want to turn yeah. out for it. It's him. absolutely round in that stadium as well. It's yeah, amazing. I can imagine. Yeah. I absolutely imagine. Um, uh, he amassed 72 caps for France, scoring 41 goals. <laughs> Midfielder. I'm pretty sure he was the leading scorer until Henri broke it, wasn't he? Yeah. He was, yeah. Uh, he summed up his playing career quite nicely uh, saying I began playing for the biggest club in the Lorraine region went to the biggest club in France and ended up with the biggest club in the world Yay. <laughs> did quite like that um, a year after retiring he became manager of the French national side gave Didier J- Deschamps his first international cap and uh, started a strike partnership up with Cantona and Papin oh you're having that I think Papin might have scored in that testimonial actually oh did he yeah he played in that yeah yeah yeah, yeah marvellous uh, he got the best out of Cantona for France may, many people say and when Cantona was thinking about quitting Platini was one of the people who influenced his move to England to help restart his career because he said I think he'll do well there yeah so thank you very much for that Michel yeah uh, when he um, managed France uh, into the 90s they, um, they went on a record breaking 19 game unbeaten run uh, and were one of the favourites for Euro 92 but they didn't manage to impress at the tournament going out in the first round with England uh, and he finished uh, his managerial stint after that and he didn't want to do uh, club football and so he got into the administrative side of the game with the French Football Federation very rare and uh, later yeah. as uh, in UEFA and then president which yeah. he currently is got the big job winner. yeah mm. got the big job and uh, I mean, there's a little bit of controversy around him, isn't there? As the president of UEFA. Well, yeah, yeah. I d- with the greatest respect, you're always going to get that because yeah. you're the head of, of UEFA, and you know you can't please everyone all the time, can you? You, no. you, you judge people by um, the company they keep, and he's forced to keep Sepp Blatter as a friend. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. He's done some stuff like the old six and five sort of homegrown rule, which yeah. is and also, right. I mean, the, the financial fair play rules are largely down to him. You know, he's, he's quite altruistic in a lot of senses. Yeah, he you know, is, yeah. Or you could look at that and say he hates the Premier League. <laughs> you should think he does. <laughs> yeah, he says he doesn't, but he's hardly going to come out and yeah. say that. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
you know, we we shall see what, what his um, if there will be a legacy left with his reign, or if indeed he goes on to bigger and FIFA more. president. Well, mm. well, yeah. We, yeah. But but like I say, we're focusing on his playing career, which is glittering. Yeah. It really is. I mean, what an influential player he was. And I mean, I said one of the best players in Europe, possibly one of the the, the, the greats. Oh, he won oh, Ballon d'Or three times in a row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's no bad well, thing. I think only it? Messi's done that. Mm. Since something like that, and a, a quintessential number ten who. Just had it all as a player, very cultured, uh, and all the rest of it. He was against the 39th game. Oh yeah, he the was. Premier League, so <laughs> not all bad <laughs> if, you, uh, if you're not too sure. Um, he was once asked if he considered himself the best player in the world, and he replied, "It's not that I regarded myself as the best player in the world. I was the best player in the world." <laughs> and he's coming into the thing where that's all the fun. Oh, and don't forget, yeah, um, <clears throat> the Dean when that's all the fun at the moment is in association with Kitbag.com. If you follow our Twitter feed and, and follow the instructions on there, you'll get a chance to win a £50 voucher towards some football shirts. So go for it. Kitbag.com and at KitbagUK on Twitter. Maybe buy yourself some socks and then roll them down. Yeah, just, mm. like, just like Michelle. Mm.